Welcome everybody back to Boost in Motion, guys. And today, as I've been told, Boost, you never go outside. You never go do anything. You're goddamn right I don't do anything. But guys, in this video, I'm going to be with the C63 a little bit. And might as well, I'm doing something to the C63. And I might as well just have a conversation with y'all for a little bit. So guys, hit that intro. Welcome everybody back to Boost in Motion, guys. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Thank you. Always love that quick startup. Doesn't start super loud, but always love it. Boost, what's up, man? What's up? Why don't we see any C63 videos, man? Why don't we see you out there being a hooligan? Why we don't see you modifying this car as much as you would modify your Q50, your Q60? Like, you seem like the type of dude that would really be working on your car. And you guys are right. I am a little hot. This sun is beaming right on me but no windows open let's not do that so boost tell me what's up like why haven't you done any of this stuff well in this video i'm gonna be working on the car doing something to the dash which i might just show you but also on top of that what's the limitations why haven't i d dived deep into modifying the mercedes c63 so number one reason is i'm gonna tell you with all honesty because i enjoy driving this car I'm not gonna lie, every time I drive this car, it is an exciting, it has a hell of a lot of torque, it's low end, the noises, it does everything that I like it to do, and it's still a four door vehicle. But Boost, like, if you like it so much, why haven't you? Are you too cheap? Is it because it's a Benz? What? Well, number one reason is the rear wheel drive. I gotta be honest with y'all, the rear wheel drive does take away from the car. Like, I really do enjoy driving this car. The traction control is really good, but it's nothing compared to an old, traditional all-wheel drive vehicle such as the Q50 or Q60. Those cars just literally, it takes off, it hooks. And it, it there's something about usable power, which is still an underrated thing. Like, remember when the GTR first came out, we loved the GTR so much because it had aggressive launches. It took off, it did what it's supposed to do, you know, and then you modified it and got faster upstairs also, right? This car is really fast upstairs. Once it's moving, it's pretty quick. Remember, I just have a JV4 boost controller and, I was, and I'm keeping up with E85 um, S55s. And I wanna race other cars within that horsepower range, but I don't really be outside like that. So you're like, well, boost, and if you're telling me this, you know this car is fast, so why don't you just modify it on that level of making it quicker? It has definitely affected me. Second reason I would sit there and say is, um, would move on would be, it really affect me the most is proximity. Reason being is I live in New York City. So the thing about New York City is as much as I love, care about this place, there's just not enough space for you to really go and enjoy your car. There's no space to do it. This is mainly a stoplight place, so rear wheel drive and aggressive launches like from an all wheel drive system is just not gonna be really a thing. It's, it's unfortunate, but it's, it's just honestly the honest case about this, about where I live. So rear wheel drive, proximity in the sense there's no open space to really enjoy the rear wheel drive or to, to really wind the car out where it's really enjoys where it shines right um three what i would say is i would say price of modifying the car let me let me quickly explain because i want you guys thinking it's super expensive it really isn't a pure turbo on the q50 is the same like a pure turbo on a c63 it's actually more affordable and easier to install it on a mercedes right but other components do get quite expensive you see, if you want to go E85 on like a Q50 VR30, you're only spending like $1,500. Well, you need two high-pressure fuel pumps, for I remember, on an M177. So you're spending $3,500 on just high-pressure fuel pump. Low-pressure fuel pump is a little under $1,000. And then if anything else from there fails, like injectors, it's still on more on the expensive side. So to run E85 on this car is absolutely really expensive, right? Also... There is a lower tier level turbos, as I said. You can get a pure turbo for about the same price, but if you want the real, 
larger turbos. I don't mean a stock frame turbo. They actually make larger turbos that, that sit on top of these motors. You're spending $10,000 now. You're going to a next level of, you to, you're going to a, you're going for the higher level of power, but it's gonna cost money. And tuning in here in this community, community seems very, um, what I would say, slim. And what I mean by that is, the M177, these Mercedes cars, at least this platform, is more about we just make a flash file for you and send it to you. That's it. We don't really tune your car. Majority of companies just sell, send you a regular file. That's your, that's a super conservative file. So that's the kind of the downturn with it because most people, they're not going to do too much with their AMG. They're going to do a stage one, which is just a tune only, or maybe a stage two where they do like a, a full cat, a down, a full down pipe, a full cat down pipe and a tune. That's it. And with intake, that's really much it. it. No one really goes past that. So people who will sit there and say like, hey, I want to run full 85. Most tuners are pretty trash at actually tuning on it. don't know nothing about it. So you get all the components spent. They'll spend five thousand dollars in five to six grand stuff in just components to start running E85, right? And then you go to a tuner that's gonna charge you two thousand dollars plus. I'm talking about two thousand dollars on the low end plus to tune your car in E85 on top of dyno sessions and everything. And the cars they still don't have enough experience to do so in this platform. So you're at the end of the day, you do all of this, right? You spend all this money, and if you want to run fully 85, which leads to four, right? If you want to run least to four in this platform, e full 85, you're only going to be making a little over 600 wheel horsepower on stock turbos, right? And it's like, you spent all this money, $10,000 just to make over 600 wheel. That's why I'm explaining the price thing. That's why most people, it's actually more affordable just to run, to go get a whole new pure turbo or VRP turbo for four or 5,000, swap that in, and leave the fuel system uh, simple the way it is, because you don't have to make no changes to that, and run 91, 93, and you're making six, 650. You're making the same amount of power, and you don't have to spend all that money on the 85. So what I'm saying is, I would say there's a lack of tuning support for when you want to go uh, to the really big numbers and go for alt other alternative fuels outside of um, a race fuel and 93. And I would say the components are super expensive depending on what you want to actually build and go into. All right. So these are some of the reasons why I haven't really got into it. Even though I am giving you guys a price breakdown for certain things, it's just that it's to me, finally, it's just not enough usable power. I'm going to say it. A 93 tuned Q50 with bolt-ons and this car on a full-fledged tune, if they both met up at a stoplight, that Q50 is going to smack this car's ass all day, every day at a stoplight. But if you are on a highway and you're doing a roll, this car with just a simple boost controller is going to, uh, was, is going to obliterate, I don't want to say obliterate. It's going to continue to always leave that full E85 Q50 because it just, it just can't sit with it. Sorry, Q50s, you just don't sit with it. So... I'm just using the Q50 example. There's other cars out there I will say, but you know, because most of you guys are Nissan Infinity guys, I want you to understand where, where kind of where the horsepower sit at. Pretty much for my track people, this car will trap close to 130, right around 130, with a full fledged tune and and or E. So it'll be like high 120s, low 130s, right? Especially if like you're on E. Boost controller, I'm um, should be right around that 125 to 130, 130 area. So some of you guys will be like, well, that's E85 territory. Not everyone's E85. You have to be like, most people on stock turbos are running between like 121 and 125, right? But their 60 to 130s are pretty decent. This car's 60 to 130s is really high. We're just on 93 fuel. And and then if you want to go race gas in 85, that's it. This car sits up there. So there's different reasons. I know I'm really just talking to the choir right now. You're just like, well, boost, whatever. You're just saying that you should have never got the C63. And to be honest with you, I wanted to get it for the channel because I want to step out of my comfort zone. But mainly this car was for me. So for me to get for me to get out of my comfort zone, for me to experience other cars and see maybe what I'm missing. I always wanted an Imperial car. And for the lack of Infinity making an Imperial car, that, that really stands out there. 
really affected me. So I was like, let me go check this out. And I enjoy this car. Mercedes leaves a good, really good taste in my mouth. So that's why in the future, I'm considering to still hop in a more faster and higher power. It's a 650, the older one. Um, I'm really considered still banging with Mercedes and will I probably still have Mercedes on the channel in the future? 100%, I will. But I'm still understanding that this isn't really a tuning platform type of car. This is a car you get, you do a stage one, stage two at the most and call it a day. For the small amount of people who really care that I wanna make 600, 700, 800 wheel horsepower, this car definitely has, it's not even the potential, this car can do it, do it. Um, and you can do it on the more affordable side, but if you really want to get into it and put those larger turbos and make 800, 900 wheel, you're going to be spending a pretty coin. And, and there's just not enough tuning support or people who are good at tuning in this platform. And as I know people are going to list it below, all these big companies, and I don't want to speak on them, but those companies suck. I'm going to say it straight up on video. Majority of them suck. They just know how to make a base file and send it to you, and that's it. They're not trying to push the envelope, and if you want your envelope pushed, you're going to have to spend a lot of money. And a lot of people still haven't got results once they spent all that money because it's like, wow, this car is good, but this tune over here is doing way, way better. It is what it is. But outside of that, guys, you have a good morning, good afternoon, good night. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for tapping with your boy, Boost. Much love. I appreciate it. You already know what to do. Uh, add me at BoostEmotion.ig, Facebook, and BoostEmotion.gmail.com. Otherwise, good night, guys. You have a good day. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Do appreciate you guys. Love you guys very much. You can also check out the two links I posted for some of my other videos. Also, on top of that, if you want to purchase some Boost Emotion merch, definitely check the link that I posted also. And finally, if you've been watching all my videos and you enjoy them, please hit the link for to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.